So after doing the single layer, we now move on to multiple layer. And we want to do multiple layer of, of the slab first and we'll see how it's similar for the other uh, geometries. So when do, we, when do we see multiple layers of a slab? So here I have several examples. So you can have uh, you know, several layers of clothing. So the heat has to transfer through all of these layers. And then insulation, um, as in a, in a building, so the heat has to transfer through all of these, these layers. And then um, you can think of the layers of um, in a skin. And again, heat has to transfer through all of these layers. So we're going to simplify that using a, a schematic like here, so where we have three different layers. So this is like one layer and this is the second layer and this is third layer one two three the three layers and um, we are going to see how we can calculate heat flow and temperature profile in the layers okay so so let's get started so here we have the three layers and we have convection on this side and convection on the other side. So how we uh, do this is the, the most critical part here is at steady state, the same heat has to flow at any point. Same heat flow. This is the meaning of steady state because if that is not the case, so suppose I take two layers here and if there is more coming in than going out, then the temperature of this layer is going to increase with time and that is not steady state. So if it has to be steady state, whatever heat is coming through this layer has to get out through this other layer um, and the area, the area perpendicular to this is constant. Okay, so let's call this heat flow as Qx. So heat for layer one, my heat flow is Qx equal to K1, the conductivity of one times area times T1 minus T2 over L. So you can, if you would like, you can also write Qx is equal to minus K1 dt dx times the area is equal to minus K1 times dt is T2 minus T1 over dx is L1 and, and and that's equal to K1 times A, K1 times A times T1 minus T2 over L1. And, and so that's what I have written here. Um, so then Qx I can write as T1 minus T2 over L1 over K1A. And likewise, I can write for the second layer, Qx, the same heat flow in terms of the uh, two uh, temperatures, T2 minus T3 over L2 over K2A. And the same way for the third layer, the three temperatures at T3, T4, and L3 over K3A. Okay. And um, for the convection on the hot side, that's this side here, Qx is equal to the convection coefficient, the convective heat transfer coefficient on the hot side 
times the area times TH, the fluid temperature minus T1, the surface temperature. And likewise for the cold side, for the cold side, um, Qx equal to whatever is the convective heat transfer coefficient on the cold side times area times the surface temperature at T4 minus Tc. So the direction of um, Qx is the direction of x. Okay, now algebraically I can write this first one as T1 minus T2 is equal to Qx times L1 over K1a and T2 minus T3 equal to the, the same way and like that for T3 minus T4. And then from here, T4 minus Tc, I can write as Qx times 1 over HCA. And then this one, I can write Th minus T1. Now, if I add up the left hand side and the right hand side. So in the left hand side I only have TH minus TC and that's equal to QX times all of these. Okay and so I can rewrite that as QX is equal to TH minus TC that's this guy divided by all of these quantities and now I'm going to um, make the notation that these quantities we have already discussed they are the thermal resistances so these are the three conductive thermal resistances and this is the convective resistance on each side so so then Flow, so then what we just saw is heat flow, I could write as temperature difference divided by summation of the thermal resistances in this particular case. Now I want you to see that this concept, even though it showed up in heat flow, it's a more universal concept. Uh, so you can think of flow as what's driving the flow divided by the resistances and this is something you must have seen before in physics or in electricity that current flow is equal to voltage difference divided by the summation of the electrical resistances when the resistances are in series okay so that's the case here the heat flow the thermal resistances are in series because heat has to go through each one of them okay so here then the conductive resistance is l over ka and the convective resistance is 1 over ha Okay, so back to the equation that we derived, heat flow Qx is equal to this temperature difference divided by sum of all the resistances. Okay, so like we did for a slab, for a cylinder, um, the two things we want to know for a system are heat flow and temperature profile. So heat flow we got now let's see how we can get temperature profile. And this can be quite interesting. You notice that once I know the heat flow, I can find any temperatures at, at any point. How? So let's take an example. So let's take this point, the star, which is somewhere inside the first layer so this is my first layer and this is somewhere inside the first layer at a distance l star okay 
So because it's at steady state, same heat flows through each layer. So I can write this heat flow Qx as equal to any two temperature differences any two temperature difference so t1 minus t star divided by the thermal resistance between those two points so temperature difference between those uh, between two points and thermal resistance between those two points so of course i have to know t1 and i have to know the thermal conductivity area and, and the distance that i'm interested in uh, if I know those, I can find T star. I can find any temperatures here once I know heat flow. So, But how do I know heat flow? Well, the same idea. So the heat flow, I can write in terms of any other temperatures. So for example, between TH and T1, I can write this or between T2 and T3, I can write this, or between a T4 and the TC, I can write. So any two temperatures, or any two temperatures I know, in terms of those, I can uh, write the heat flow to be equal to this. And from that, I calculate heat flow, and that heat flow, then I, use here to find temperatures at any point. You notice that it's not just between any two points on the boundary. It can be literally anything. So I can take these two points where this is some arbitrary point, then my heat flow is going to be this, um, this point, let's say, let's call it five, and 6. So Qx would be T5 minus T6 over two resistances. One is between 5 and let's say a 5 star. So um, R resistance between 5 and 5 star plus resistance between 5 star and 6. Okay. So I can do this between any two points and, and get the flux. So a question would be whether these two situations where you have the identical three materials, but in, a, in two different arrangements, would they lead to the same rate of heat transfer when the temperatures on the sides are the same. Same T1 here as here, T2 here as T2. So this is something I would like you to think about.